Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, no, we had some uh, no audio, but that's because we have a reputation to maintain, and uh, we are determined to uh, maintain it. So uh, here we are back at Stress Free Lounge, and I have to tell you, uh, I am just completely obsessed. Uh, so let me uh, tell you what I'm obsessed about, and then we will have ourselves a, a look at the questions. I haven't looked at them yet, as often for the last several days. But uh, in any event, um, let me tell you what I've been doing uh, with with a lot of my time. Um, first of all, uh, this is not what I've been completely obsessed about, but you guys should be the first to know. Uh, the National Rifle Association has um, offered me my own show. So I'm going to be on NRA TV every day, uh, four days a week. Uh, I want to say 2.30 Pacific. Uh, that sounds right. Uh, for a half an hour, and I'm doing a show on the culture. I'm going to do a show on the intersection between, technically between guns and the pop culture, but really more between patriotism and freedom and all the rest of it in the pop culture. So that's um, that's going to be cool. Um, and uh, it's not going to be anything uh, that I'm going to be likely to running out of topics on. Uh, Kathy Griffith thing just stands out as one example. Thank you very much for all the congratulations, you kind guys. Um, so, uh, that's been keeping me awful busy getting ready for that. And we're real excited about it that we'll probably get some upgrades to the studio here. And, uh, and, um, it, like I say, half an hour a day, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do for, uh, members and so on, but it'll be, it'll be out there on NRA TV once a day for half an hour with actual producers in Dallas. So it probably won't be the second worst produced show on the internet. It may do a little better than that, in fact, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Probably, we're still not completely uh, uh, locked down yet, but I suspect the format, what I would like it to be is the two, there's two segments in the half hour shows. It's probably, you know, what, 12 minutes each, something like that. I count the commercial times. So I'd like the first one to be basically commentary. And then the second one, one of them, at least one of them, if not two of them, are going to be interview segments. They, they originally said they wanted two interview segments, one guest for segment one and one for segment two. And I said... That's swell and everything, but you know when would I get to talk? Um, everything that they apparently liked about me on the uh, uh, enough to, to offer me the show is is um, as a result of me being a guest on Grant's show, and Grant asks me questions and I get to talk when I'm uh, when I'm asking other people questions. Mostly I have to be quiet. So hopefully, um, hopefully uh, one one segment. Uh, at least most of one segment, uh, kind of a commentary thing, and then we bring in an interview either related to that particular subject or we would do something like oh, changing uh, changing hands now, let's go talk to so on and so forth. So anyway, it's exciting, and um, it's good to be able to get out there and produce daily content. I think it's going to look a lot better, and um, plus they're paying me. So that's all pretty good news. Excuse me for that uh, long drink. So, um, <clears throat> I love Aesop's retreat. He's such a great guy. He says, it's what happens when you work for it. Uh, high five, Bill. Thanks again for all the very kind uh, comments here. Um, it's going to be fun to talk about the pop culture. They, they want me to do it from, you know, inside Hollywood, which, uh, technically speaking, I more or less am. I'm certainly from inside Los Angeles. And I do have to be careful that I don't un, in any way oversell the amount of um, experience or, or uh, certainly the amount of juice that I had in this town. I was just a screenwriter, didn't get anything sold, and was an editor for, oh, I don't know, seven, eight years, something like that. But I know the business, and I and the, the main reason I think I'm really qualified for this actually was by just a stroke, stroke of luck. Um, I was the, the, the longest gig I had ever, I think ever. Including, um, including the one I'm doing now. I did five years, six years, um, as an editor for Sunday Morning Shootout with Peter Bart and Peter Goober. And that was an interesting movie talk show because the hosts weren't just you know the you know the the bubble-headed bleach blonde who comes on at five. The hosts were Peter Bart and Peter Goober. Peter Bart was the editor of Variety. Peter Goober a was certainly a major producer. And so. As the editor of that show, I got to see all of the, well, virtually all of the off-camera commentary. Um, the cameras were rolling, obviously. I, was, I wasn't on location, but I'd get, you know, four or five angles 
lock them up in sync, and generally they'd go on for five, six, seven, eight, ten minutes before they'd actually start the show, and then they'd often do it afterwards, keep talking too. So I got a chance to really see, uh, you know, people behind the scenes, and that was that was great. So in any event, um, it's going to be uh, the pop culture, and I find that when I get tweeted out by the NRA, I'm getting a little more. Yes, Bill. Bill did make a Don Henley reference there. Um, uh, is that boner canoe? In any event, uh, so um, yeah, so that'll be great, and it's going to start on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday will be. I'm going to consider them broadcast tech rehearsals. We got a lot of things that we have to figure out, especially uh, most important of which is the whole show is going to be switched from Dallas. So. We're going to um, be opening the show up more as we get a little more technically, uh, you know, situated. Uh, there's a very important aspect of it would be to have the monitor behind me um, be able to be controlled from Dallas so that if I'm talking about uh, Kathy, what's her name, then I can have a picture of her up behind me, and that would that would just be groovy cool. So, um, what, did I get it? Oh, Bone Canoe. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, my vision's not what it used to be. That C looked like an R to me. I had a feeling that was a funny handle. Here it comes, now we're going to hear a barrage of all these other things. But let me um, briefly tell you what I'm um, really obsessed about and stoked about, and I won't spend a lot of time on this having not seen the um, comments yet. But, um, and it's got to do with this uh, Star Citizen game. I spent two weeks just immersed in this. And for those of you who wrote me, I haven't had a chance to respond to any of you yet because it took me a week, a week, to get the drivers configured for this PC. And I was doing that in my spare time and moving the computer home. And it took me a long time to do that. It took me probably another week to get the controllers the way I wanted it. And, you know, all of this stuff was just technical stuff. Didn't even get a chance to go around. But I was, however... Um, Oh, and by the way, somebody just mentioned this. I don't want to get I don't want to get off track, but somebody just mentioned I, I will be doing the Grant show. I'll still be doing that ten o'clock in the morning hit. I, I love it. I love Grant. It's fun to work with, so I'm going to keep doing that. In any event, I've been watching a, a lot of movies about this. The game as it exists now, and and this is not a talk about computer games. This is about something much bigger than computer games. So if you're thinking, oh God, here goes Bill again with a computer game thing, hold on. Um, the New version that's coming up is apparently coming up at the end of June. It's going to be um, significantly more territory. In fact, enormously more territory to explore. So I've spent two weeks just getting familiar with the game and how it plays and how it works. But then starting about a week ago, I started doing some something that was a little different. I started taking pre-recorded game footage that other people had recorded, um, not just running around shooting. Some people out there, most of these people I assume are very young, but some of them understand that there's a detachable camera and that you can do cinematic shots. Um, and so I found a guy who was doing, just I just looking for Star Citizen videos, I found a guy who did a bunch of cinematic shots in no particular order, just putting the camera relative to the, to the character, relative to various buildings and so on, relative to the ships and all this other stuff. And... Um, I took that footage and I brought it into Premiere Pro, and this is the advantage of me being a, a total sci-fi game geek. As I said, if I'd been born a year or two earlier, I would have missed the entire boat. But now that I'm actually, um, you know, have the means to have an editing system, thanks to guys like you and, and members especially, um, I was able to take this game footage, which composition-wise was pretty good, but still looked very, very computer gamey. And I put a bunch of film look filters on it. I gave it, uh, gave it kind of a film look. I played with the contrast. I added a lot of grain. Um, and I had to add something called a warp, which, believe it or not, slightly bends everything. Just slightly, slightly. Well, you can crank it up to the point where you can't recognize it. But just, just slightly bends everything. And that got a, a fair amount of the um, computery look of it out. So, so far so good. I've been talking about, you know, going in there and shooting movies and stuff, and, and, and there it is. Now, in the new version, in some new version, I don't know if it's the upcoming new version, I just saw something, that's why I was late. I, I couldn't put it down. Uh, in an upcoming version, I've seen the software. Uh, I, I just watched it work. 
they have a number of stock different heads so you can replace the heads, but there are now no fooling. You obviously can replace the eye color, the hair and all the rest of it, but there are sliders, sliders for things like how tight is your jaw? So I'll be using that on myself quite a bit. There are sliders to move your eyes down and, and further apart relative to yourself. There are sliders to change the length and the, and the shape of your nose. In other words, there are sliders that will allow you to morph a male head into essentially anything you want. And you can get it pretty close. And pretty soon we'll be able to just g grab a picture of our heads. And I'm sure that's already capable. Just put ourselves in the game. So where am I going with all of this? Well, here's my big breakthrough thought. Um, the game... I think I said this last time, they have, me now as well as a, as a subscriber to the game, and because uh, I believe in subscribing to things that, that I support and that I get a lot of kick out of, they've probably put $150, $160 million into this game. And I don't look at it as a game, although I'm going to look at it as a game. Um, a lot of people are telling me a lot of uh, a lot of the MMOs have that. Well, that's great. So I, in any event, I didn't know that. But um, I'm not looking at it as a game. I'm looking at it as a 165 million real-time um, movie studio with the ability, certainly in the upcoming version, to put the camera virtually anywhere. And some of the shots are incredible. I'm going to take those shots, bring them into Premiere. I'm going to I'm going to play around with them uh, film look wise and I'm going to get them looking as cinematic as I can. And a lot of the exteriors, it's almost good enough. Now, let me just straight straight out say I don't ever expect. Well, not ever. I don't expect this to be photorealistic, but I expect it to be close enough so that it'd be interesting. So my problem now is and this is my big breakthrough that I really like. The problem was. How do you get these characters to talk? Because you can get them to look around and blink and even um, there'll be something like it, but, but it won't look quite right. So in other words, the game looks really good and the further away you are from things, the better they look. So I was looking at the characters in this Star Citizen thing and they're wearing um, the kind of advanced pressure suits that they're just now designing. Uh, most spacesuits you've seen are these huge bulky things and basically it's a balloon. It's a, it's a fabric balloon that they inflate to more or less atmospheric pressure and your skin lives inside of that and because there's air pressure there, uh, you don't suffer any decompression problems, but bending them is very tough because they're so full of you know, high pressure. But now they're working on suits that are essentially like um, wetsuits. They're, they're skin tight and they basically thermally isolated and they stop you from exploding because of, of pressure. So in the game, um, everybody's wearing these spacesuits. And I was thinking, God, I wish I could do, I wish I could do something. And then it, it all of a sudden, boom, 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 hit me. Um, I started searching for helmets that you could wear because the helmets are, are most of the characters wearing helmets. And I, I found a couple things from Halo and I didn't really like it very much. And then I started looking at motorcycle helmets. And I am here to tell you, some of these motorcycle helmets are intentionally designed to look like they're from fighter pilots, uh, you know, two, three hundred years in the future. I saw five or six or seven of them that I thought were great. Great. And then I looked at um, wetsuits. And wetsuits are exactly the same as these undergarments that these guys have. And then I looked at motorcycle, um, you know, motorcycle armor, the kind of stuff you use if you go off a bike and so on. And honestly, it took me probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And what I discovered was instead of having an online character who I could customize to look like us, because I don't have that kind of control over the game, but I could get, I could get a certain number of real life costumes that would match the costumes in the game. And behind me yonder, I have a green screen, uh, and I've got lights, and I've got uh, After Effects, and I've got all this other stuff. So the thought occurred to me that what I could basically do is I could block out a scene between two characters in the game, the lighting and so on. It's just these two computerized characters basically talking to each other, shot number one, shot number two, and a wide shot. And then what I would do is I would keep those camera angles. I'd remove the characters. Those would give me background plates, and in most cases animated background plates. And having had the computer thing as a reference, I would then be able to take green screen footage that was more or less from the same angle, composite it in there. I wouldn't have to composite it over the existing character because the existing character would be gone. I'd set up the, um, I'd set up the, the, the shots using the virtual actors, and then I would go and get 
real actors doing this. Uh, now, none of this is technically beyond my means at all. None of it is, is, is actually quite simple given these days. And so what I'm so jazzed about is it, it means that if I can pull this off, I'm quite sure I can, it means that I can do all of this in order to make movies with a $160 million studio. I've always been a science fiction guy. I can make a series of science fiction movies, short ones um, or longer ones. And I can start telling a story. I can start telling a serial story. And this is the way to reach younger people. I'm going to set up a new YouTube channel. I'm going to set up a new website. And, um, and basically, I was just sitting around. Uh, and by the way, I am going to do Big Bat Problems. I know c people have asked about that. That is a real-world movie, nothing to do with computers. It's going to require a bit of money. And the reason I'm bouncing around excited, the reason I'm just jumping up and down excited is because the biggest weakness in the in the big bat problem um, pitch was I got a lot of financial sense and I've got a lot of publicity and a, and a write and the script and all that and the artwork and the concept work all of that the biggest the biggest hole in it was I haven't done any directing since man I want to say ninety seven maybe one or two exceptions and so I don't have a directing reel but now I am I'm just vibrating because the they have given me a, a world where I have complete control over the cameras. I have a very high level of control over costumes. I have, I have unbelievable sets, unbelievable sets, unbelievable props. I've got all this stuff in there. So using the game engine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write stories, and then I'm going to tell them, and I'm going to use a combination of mostly game graphics, but when we get close, I'm going to take... I'm going to take real-world stuff in the green screen, composite it over the existing shot, match the lighting as much as I can. Then when all of that stuff is com composited together, then I'm going to apply um, a, a warp effect and grain and, and a shaders over both the computer stuff and the green screen stuff. And this is what we did, this is what we did um, with the virtual presidency. You've got computer elements, you've got live elements, and they don't if you've got a discerning eye, you can clearly see the difference. But if you've got a live element and a computer element, and then you put the same grain over both of them and the same slight distortion over both of them and, and play with the lighting and the contrast, then you can get it good enough. Um, it, it's not going to be perfect, and I don't plan for it to be perfect, but it'll be good enough. And so... Um, I bring a lot of things to this to this Star Citizen game that I haven't seen yet, and I've seen a lot of Star Citizen in the last two weeks. There are people out there, mostly young people, um, who uh, who are beginning to play with things like the camera's depth of field, the, the camera moves, and all that other stuff. But they're moving way too much. So I come into this into this little sandbox as a as a director. Uh, I come into a sandbox as a guy who knows how to compose a shot, and I come in especially as a writer and I know how to write a story. And all of the things that look phony in the game are simple to fix. For example, if you watch people walk, they, they look like they're in a major hurry to get to the bathroom, and we're just going to slow it down. And if they won't walk any more slowly than this in the game, then I will just basically record it at 60 frames a second, and I'll just slow it down in Premiere and get a natural, realistic walk going. And then we can tell these stories. Now, I have not seen our friend um, uh, Viper here. Uh, Foghorn, if you're, if you're here, I haven't seen you yet. But this is what I was thinking about on the drive over here. Um, the kind of thing I'm talking about is, I'll just give you, because it just came to me half an hour ago, and I'm just on fire for it. So the first thing, as I sit here right now, that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a lot. This is the other thing. I want to take real-world experience as a pilot, and I want to talk to actual infantry guys. I want to talk to, to special forces guys, and I want to get the moves correct. But most importantly, I want to get the language right. So in the game, just to give you an example, because I'm talking about film now and I'm talking about politics, believe it or not. So when you keep hearing me talk about the game, you got to understand where I'm going with this thing. In the game, there's this... Uh, there's a space station, basically, and players land and dock on the space station. They take off and they fly away. And you come in and you land and you take off and you fly away. And that's how it works. And that's how everybody assumes it works. 
Wild Goose says something to do it on Twitch. I don't know. I, I know that Twitch is, is, is growing and we're going to put it there. But so, so just hear me out here for a second. So in the game, you go, there's this quantum drive that moves you around a solar system pretty fast. And you hit this quantum drive, you get this really cool effect. But it's a cool effect, but it's a cool visual effect, but I'm going to add camera shake. I'm just going to add shaking camera. It's going to just really make it a lot more real. And sound effects. Every single footstep is going to have the correct sound effect and, and, you know, and everything. So in the game, you and you appear right next to the station. You just basically go in and land. And what I'm going to do is, there's one more thing I have to set up. Um, these graphics look as good as Babylon 5, since Dave Big Booty just mentioned it. Um, what I'm going to do is um, everything's going to be choreographed. I think I mentioned this last week. If you're playing the game to win as a shooter, as a first-person shooter on the ground with, you know, as a, a Marine or something, or in fighter combat, the correct way to win the game is to make these very tight turns and these weird reversals, and everything kind of just kind of rums back and forth and, and so on. Um, Gecko wants to know why a quantum drive would shake. Well, it's because of micro-adjustments in the quantum state. Uh, Gecko, the technology is good enough to get us from A to B, but the, the more we, faster we can process the information, the less shake we get. And these are still pretty first-generation quantum drives. There's your answer for you, smart aleck. Uh, so instead of just and arriving at this thing, I'm going to have two guys in fighter jets, and I'm going to be one of them, and I'm going to be a colonel, and they're going to fly as if it were real combat, which means much, much wider circles uh, than you'd get in the game. Much more realistic. Uh, try and make it look like they did in Star Wars, where you basically have a couple of, of, of good guys knocking off, uh, you know, Messerschmitts that are attacking a B-17, that kind of thing. So... When these guys go to the to the space station, I'm going to put them in the quantum drive. But instead of just appearing at the drive's doorstep, I'm going to at the space station's doorstep. I'm going to back the the whole the whole thing up, the whole everything back up, to the point where that space station's pretty small. And then when these guys come out of quantum drive, it's going to be something like you know, um, I think all the star, whatever it's going to be. Uh, oh, and no, but none of this is in the game. And I'm just going to say um, all the star approach, uh, uh, Buick. Six flight of two inbound uh, inbound to land with Tango because it's a civilian base, and um, and it'll say uh, uh, Buick six radar contact uh, 40, 40 kilometers. Um, say aircraft type, and he'll give give the aircraft type, and then as we get closer, he's going to hand off, uh, going to hand me off to um, to to the uh, is it Oristar? I forget the name of the space station. Then he's going to give me the handoff to the tower, and I'm going to take a picture, a part of that space station. It's going to be the tower. We're going to... Oh, Olasar, thanks, Matt. Matt is the only guy I met online, by the way. It, it took me 20 hours of, of messing around to have an hour with Matt, which was really fun. It's amazing, by the way, just a quick aside. It's amazing to suddenly see this uh, this space fighter. It looks, you know, the hornet that he was flying. and say, I know that guy. That guy's in there. And we're talking to each other and we're flying, you know, combat together. But no one's done any formation flying in Star Citizen that I've ever seen. I've never seen formation flying in the game and there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of gameplay. I've never seen formation flying. So this flight of two is going to come in. We'll, you'll, you'll see a bit of the combat and, we'll, and then we'll come in and we'll they'll switch us over to tower. We'll come in, we'll make the approach. They'll say, you know, use the, uh, the, the, the Mako 2 approach, you know, cleared for uh, Mako 2 approach, contact the tower for landing, and you get the landing clearance, bring it down, and then you contact ground, uh, you know, uh, Mako, uh, Mako 2 taxi, hover taxi to pad uh, 08. Boom. And, we'll, and when we come in, we're going to do an overhead break and fly right over the station, high speed, break, and come around. And we're going to use all the right language. We use the air traffic control language. We're going to use all of this stuff. Now, Gecko says in space there's no atmosphere to work against. I understand that completely. But there's no quantum effect either. So the dynamics, the flight dynamics are built into this thing to make it feel like it's flying an atmosphere. So there's your science fiction fig leaf for this. Okay. So, so then we come in and land. And basically, I'm going to have this older guy. They get to the, you know, to the, to the locker room and they're, pull their helmets off and they're wearing uh, we're going to be wearing um wetsuits which is going to be very comfortable under those lights uh wetsuits with the with the helmet and we're going to try and match the existing s skins and i'm going to see if they can let me make a custom skin and psh, and we're going to pull these helmets off and we're going to sit there in this lounge and we're going to have a conversation in the ready room and basically 
I'm going to basically say, you know, this is kind of an existence, but this is not really living. This is not what I had in mind. Because in the game, it's the United Earth Empire. And, and the older pilot's going to say, I don't much like flying for an empire. And the younger guy's going to say, well, it's always been that way. He says, well, not always. You know, and then slowly what's going to happen, the story I'm going to tell, I'm going to, we're going to reproduce the story in the actual game. I'm going to tell the story about this fighter pilot who's not happy um, flying for, uh, for an empire. He has read some history. He knows about uh, the United States three, four hundred years ago before everything went south. And then um, he's going to bump into a guy with some money. And together, they're going to start a project. Um, and I think I, I was going to call it, um, oh, what's the name? Anduril, which is the name of um, Aragon's sword, uh, Flame of the West. I might stay with that. I might call it the Armstrong Vanguard. In any event, they, these guys together, he's going to say there's some other people talking this way. And what we're going to do is in this universe, we're going to tell this story, and it's going to be in the game. We're going to tell the story through a series of movies. We're going to set up a, a whole world. So not only do we not need, not only do we just need things like pilots and guys who are good with first-person shooters, we're going to need accountants, and we're going to need, um, going to need guys with all this stuff. Homer said, I'm sorry, Bone Canoe, sorry. Oh, Homer Canoe. Bone Canoe said it exactly right. It's, it's the common sense resistance in space. It's the common sense resistance movie in the common sense resistance. And, and what's basically going to happen is, if I understand the, the game correctly, uh, the upgrade that's coming at the end of the month, you will be able to put a settlement down someplace and that, and that in this persistent universe where everything is connected to everything that already happened, you can die. You can die, die, not die and respawn. You die. And um, insurance pays for your, for your ship, and uh, you have to bequeath everything to a successor. So what I'm basically saying is I would like to set up everything. I'd like to be doing our own exploration. I'd like to find a place way out of the way, start putting some settlements down. I'd like to have enough money in the, in the thing so that, the, so that this um, organization, this Anduril Vanguard, can actually start making money doing things like running cargoes and, and stuff like that, build up enough cash to get an actual fleet going, and see how far I can take it. Um, see how far I can take um, this idea. Because the cool part of this is that while I've just talked about how I can make movies and script those movies, the thing that I'm just poking around and starting to get the feel of is since this game consists of millions of people playing simultaneously, it should be possible to create an American Republic in this universe and have it compete militarily, economically, politically with any one of the other organizations. Final thing I think I'll say about this, which is your clue that we're getting down to the last 20 minutes on this subject, is this. I thought, oh, you know, do I really want to do this? And then I saw a list of organizations, because in Star Citizen you can already, um, you can already uh, pick organizations. And I thought, oh, I've seen these before. I've seen clans before, you know, and they're just going to be dumb and just really nuts. But I was going down the list of organizations, already existing organizations, and they're, they're brilliant. They're brilliantly named, and the graphics, the logos, the icons, everything, everything. It's fantastic. So... This is basically why I'm so excited. I've got a $160 million real-time studio. I'm going to be able to have uh, sets and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, costumes that will allow us to use real actors for the close-ups, put them into this world with the dialogue, and then we can tell the story as a series of dramatic movies, but the story we're telling is not written yet because we are going to create this story as we go. We're going to create it in, in, this, in this persistent universe. And we're not going to be a very big organization when we start. So two things will be going on. Number one, we're going to see if we can recruit million people to the idea of an American republic. That alone is gigantic, right? 
there are a million tooth. I don't. Somebody's going to tell me how many pe- people are playing Star Citizen. It's going to get bigger every day. But right now, there are millions of of young people who don't know much about these politics at all. Don't know much about history at all. We're just going to be this another one of seven hundred organizations in this gigantic universe. But if we can do this right, and if we can keep discipline, and if we can make these movies interesting. It's all starting to come together now, even as I speak. Then we should be able to recruit people into this thing. We'd have to have very tight discipline. You can't have people running around. Uh, the, 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 the air stuff, the space stuff has to be very disciplined. We're going to run cargo routes. We're going to escort those cargo routes. If we lose a ship, we lose a ship. We lose the cargo and all this stuff. We're going we're gonna to do the accounting, going to do all this stuff. Because what they've built is absolutely incredible. And it gets better every day. And so if we can make this... If we can make this project succeed in the game as fiction, and if we then use the uber plot, the mega plot of how these things are happening, 1.3 million, says Matt, who's been my guide there, then we've got it made. We've got We've got a a history that is a real-time history, including real-time conflicts, growing economically. We'd have to get the economics right. We're going to need people who understand trade. We're going to need accountants. We're going to need people who are going to be interested in doing the exploring. We're going to need people who are interested in medical stuff, all of it. We're going to just get them from here, my fans, or from the game. And then as this thing evolves, we're going to tell stories as movies of how it evolves, shot cinematically, and those movies, we're going to try and get enough viewers out of to recruit more people into the in-game experience and then then we're good and the beautiful part of this is i don't have to i don't know what the plot's going to be because i'm not playing the adversaries i'm not even playing all of the good guys the all of the decisions that will be made by this uh, republic you just call it america okay because that's what it is it's essentially it's exactly what it is it's america in space uh 400 years from now so the people that we can recruit to this idea of building in America will be making their own decisions in the game in real time. We're going to need people who, as I say, who can understand shipping routes because we're going to need in-game money and we're going to have to use the in-game economy to get the in-game money. But I don't know what any one of the other 1.3 million opponents are doing. I don't know if they're going to launch raids against us. I don't know if we can form alliances. I, we certainly can. I don't know if we're going to form enemies. I don't know if the big government's going to come after us if we get too powerful. I don't know. But um, in any event... I haven't been this excited in a long, 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 long time because as those of you who've been watching this show for a long time know, uh, despite your very kind words about the political commentary, um, which I'm starting to get the hang of, I suppose, my interest has always been in movie making. It's always been in science fiction movie making. And now I can bring politics to a world where somebody can tell me, perhaps telling me um, what the average age on Star Citizen is. I'm going to guess it's probably 17, 16, 17, some older people, some younger people, maybe it's, maybe it's 20, 25, something like that. I think I might be, although it's going to grow, so far anyway, I'm the only person I've seen so far that knows how to tell an actual movie story. A lot of people have done fan movies, but they're not movies. They're, they're, they're trying, but they're not there. So... I'm going to try and do all of this stuff together, and I am so bloody excited because now I've got the tools to do the kind of work I've been wanting to do my entire life. And um, Victor said, uh, Media Matters is going to fund a player expedition to fight you. You know, let me just say this about that, Victor. If if Media Matters starts a, uh, an organization in Star Citizen... I will never be this happy again in my life because if that's the case, we would be able to actually shoot at them. Wouldn't that be wonderful? We'd be able to actually shoot at them, which is not an option I've had out here, and I've looked into it. Apparently, it's against the law. So anyway, I'm so jazzed. I'm jazzed about the costumes. I'm going to go looking for some money for this uh, because to do this right, um, it's going to require some costume money. It's going to require sound editors. It's going to require some stuff, but... I think if I go to people I know and tell them that what we're investing in is a series of 10 to 15 minute, 5 minute, 3 minute movies that are serial, that's an ongoing story, we're going to build an audience, going to build our own YouTube channel, and it's going to be seen by millions of kids and they're going to get a political message and they're not going to know that they're getting a political message. 
they're not going to know. You, you just the, the first example I had off the top of my head was you, you have a couple of our guys walking into the room someplace, some room in some, some you know, bar, some rundown bar and some rundown starport and stuff. You know, and they walk in and, and, and um, they're standing there and a couple guys come in and start shooting up the place. And, and our guys, you know, draw their sidearms and, and return some fire and a bunch of people go down. And you can have a guy with a line saying, I guess they didn't read the sign about this being a no-gun zone. Maybe they just walked right past it. And this is, um, this is where the message really is, you know. This is where the message really is. is it's little things like that where you can say, hey, uh, kids, you know, you're all using weapons here. You're using spaceship weapons. You're using personal weapons. Every single one of you is using weapons. And there's a team out there in the real world that's in favor of your ability to use weapons like you do in the game. It's called, it's called conservatives. Um, and we can do this economically. We can do it all over the place. I'm, I am so on fire that I'm going to make this show relatively short. I'll do another half an hour or so of questions, and, and then I'm going to get back to this because I'm jumping up and down. And uh, my fiancé, who I believe is watching this now, how are you, sweetheart, uh, has been unbelievably uh, supportive and kind. I know uh, a lot of people become game widows, um, but... Uh, She's got a bunch of uh, photographic work to do as well, and I suppose it's probably better to have your man in the back room making squealing little girl dorky noises than have him, you know, out on the town someplace, you know, talking with the guys over bowling night or something. Dave Big Booty says, "Will there be aliens?" I think they've got some, Dave. But the thing that is actually Im the thing that is actually exciting to me is that I don't cr I don't control this. I don't. I'm not. The screenwriting god, where I control the villains, I control the, I control everything. I don't. I can control a faction. I can, and that faction can grow more powerful. But I don't control that stuff. So anyway, it's going to be great. Um, and we are going to need, uh, we're going to need players. And we're mostly what we're going to need is, we're going to need actors, because in order to get this thing looking the way I want it to look, we're going to have to shoot it like it's a movie. And for those of you out there and for those people that we recruit from the game and tell them it's going to be shooting cinematic movies, you think, awesome, I can't wait. You're going to get to find out. You're going to get to find out in this game, on this virtual set, in this virtual movie, the reality of what making movies is all about, which is it is inescapably boring. You will find just it's just like, oh, my God. Yep, you just need to stand there. Hang on. Okay, and then we do it again. And, oh, this ship was a little bit late. We're going to have to do it again. Just do the same gestures, same motions, and so on. And you just go in there for a couple hours and you shoot raw footage. You capture the raw footage at 4K, you bring it into Premiere, you put it on, edit it, get the dialogue in there, um, and do your compositing of your real, uh, real-time real people, and back out you go. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a deal. Um, it's a deal. I'm really excited. Okay, 